What's up guys, welcome to Broken Posture Painting. I appreciate you joining me. You know, I'm gonna start this video off by just kind of explaining what's gonna be happening over the next few weeks. I intend on doing a multi-video series that's kind of consolidated into bite-sized digestible bits for you guys to be able to watch. The model I'm working on is a fairly large model. I would say that there's probably gonna be well over 200 hours put into painting this model. Uh, I chose this model, which is called The Ancestors Tension, and it's by a company called Black Forge Games. They had a Kickstarter that I backed about four months ago, and you can still go ahead and late pledge and back this if you're interested in this model throughout the video. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Right now, really what I'm just doing is base coating. I'm throwing on as much paint on there as I can of one color, making sure I have good coverage. You know, I always like to thin down my paints. Uh, I think it just makes the paint go a lot further, but it also allows you to not lose detail. I like to thin my paints down. I would say the go-to is a milky consistency, which I get, it's kind of hard to see in this video, but you don't want it to be quite water. Uh, you want it to be a little thicker than water. But really the big thing is once you start putting the paint on the miniature, you'll start to figure out what's enough water and what's too much. If you're painting and you're not seeing any of the color going on and it just seems like it's beating off, you definitely have too much water. If you start painting the model and all of a sudden all of the little fine details kind of just become a big blob, they don't have enough water. It's really just kind of up to you, your brush, your style, how many coats you want to put on. So what I'm putting my paint onto is actually called a wet palette. It's a great tool. It's a, essentially a tray with a sponge, wax paper on top of the sponge. You get the sponge wet. It allows moisture to stay um, within the paint so you have longer working time. The paint won't dry out as quickly. It's really great for blending and honestly just kind of saving your paint. I'll go back to this paint sometimes three, four days later and it's still good to go. Um, you know, first rule of Broken Posture Paint Club is Paint your freaking mini. Uh, you can see right here, I'm trying to hide my unpainted spot. Yikes. So I'm gonna go ahead and act like nobody saw that and paint that right away. I'm trying to get about 70% coverage right now. This is kind of the end color. This is what I, the color of the rope I really want it to be is that kind of mid-tone red. Again, we're looking at about 70% coverage. I'm not trying to paint everything that mid-tone, but I'm gonna hit a majority of the visible surface. And really, I'm just working my wet palette back and forth. When I go to the back side, you'll see I'll start kind of pulling from the darker side of uh, my color combination on the palette. When I'm hitting the front side, I'm gonna hit more towards that brighter color and really just working those back and forth and getting those nice transitions and blends in there. So now we're gonna get a little known oil out and uh, really what that's gonna do is it's gonna act as a wash. It's going to drive the shadows and the recesses back even further, so to speak, visually at least. Um, this one could be tricky because uh, you, you can overdo it and then your model looks dirty. And in my opinion, if you don't put enough on there, then your model looks dirty. So 
It's a real slippery slope and a fine line of uh, finesse and patience, I guess you could say. Really right here, I'm just pushing that color into all the crevices. As the known oil starts to run out on my brush, I'll then use my brush to wipe the flat raised surfaces. Uh, obviously, we, that's not where we want shadows. I have to excuse my counter. Um, I think I'm funny. But also, I mean, it's, it's not the worst looking forehead. It's got a nice little greasy sheen to it. So next we're going to move on to dry brushing. Really what dry brushing is, is just creating highlights on your raised surfaces. Uh, the good thing about dry brushing is this is when you really start to see your model come to life in my opinion and kind of get out of the ugly stage so to speak of painting. Uh, dry brushing is uh, an old sailor's term for wasting paint apparently because you're going to load your paintbrush up with some paint and then you're going to wipe 98% of it off. I wanted to make a point here to show that we're moving from the rounded soft dry brush to a more coarse flat brush. We're going to still use this as a dry brush application. And the reason why I'm changing is I like the softer dry brush for softer transitions and blending. Where this is going to be more for just ray surface, the very edge of the rope. Just kind of catching the very edge surfaces where light would hit and shine brightest. I'm gonna hit maybe 30% of the ray surface on this model. And the reason why when painting a larger model with multiple pieces, I don't wanna go too bright too early is once I'm done painting all the pieces, I'm gonna assemble a model and then take a look and see where I want those highlights to actually fall. All I'm going to be doing with this white here is just mixing it in with my brightest red and really just adding another layer, hitting about 20%, between 15-20% of the model with the white and red mixture in the front. The reason why I added some brown in there is I decided after painting some color on the back side of the model I didn't like how dark it was from the black prime job. Uh, I really want to push the colors on this, so I'm just going to raise it a little bit by adding some brown and red together. It's not going to change the overall look of the model, it's just going to kind of soften that back side up so it's not such a drastic change when you look at it from this side. Some individuals might not agree with me putting so much time and effort onto the back side of it, especially since you can't really see it when it's on the model. Uh, but honestly, in my opinion, I just feel like that's more surface to practice on and get the technique down. So even though I'm not doing the same thing that I'm doing on the front side, it's still, you know, practice is practice, right? Thank you. 
Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and the bell notification so you can know the next time I drop my video. Until then, take care of yourself and each other. Peace and love. Thank <laughs> you.